Um, welcome back, everyone, to After Party. We are going to be discussing our third and final episode of the After Party, not of Dice Lee Forever, because that'd be Whoa. <laughs> upsetting. Spoilers. Um, spoilers, it ends. <laughs> Everything's on a cliffhanger forever. Um, yeah, so this episode, did I already say it? Fine Whistles and Fun Wizards? No. Um, fun Wizards and Fine Whistles. Yeah. So the okay, airship descends into New Fugleby, and then also Old Fugleby, which um, I really enjoyed putting that <laughs> piece of knowledge together because I guess it should have been, well, I don't know how it would have been obvious actually, but it's really cool that that little piece of history. It's like, oh, they made the first airships here. Now we get to go talk to them because I made a note about it. Um. <laughs> it was Dallas connecting that good lore together. Yeah, that there was so nice. Um, it's just like, it's so hard because obviously we have so many other things to do, but we land in all these cities. And I'm like, I want to explore every piece of it. Also, I'm just going to address the uh, the elephant in the room. Hello, Crimson. Oh, shit. Sorry, Nick is here. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gotten to it eventually. Probably. Maybe. Where is he? At some point. Yeah, where <laughs> yes. is this mysterious elephant you speak of? <laughs> yes. So we are very lucky that Nick is joining us for this part of the after party because... Um, I guess it might be relevant in a few questions. We'll okay, I'll see. just mute. Bye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mute and turn your camera off, and then we'll surprise everyone when you come come on just like in, the, in the game. Just pretend yeah. to be perfect. Bye, Nick. Again. And that was it. That was, he was just here for a cameo. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I might try and blitz through some of this beginning stuff. So, if there's anything that's important to people, just let me know. But we do meet Q. Once we get off the airship, which I am obsessed with her because I love a Kenku. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about her creation, Denny? Especially her voice, which was really well done, if I do say so. so. Fun. Yeah, I, I won't I won't dwell on it too long. Like I knew you guys like I'd actually forgotten to give you guys the sending stone before you left. So I was like, well, somebody from the Arcanet will meet them on the other side. I want to make this per this first impre the first impression of a city is always so dang important. And I was like what fun and I just interrupt to say that you fucking nail it every single time. So <laughs> yeah. just keep that knowledge. Um there, continue. Uh, so the I was just like, well, what would be fun? What have what kind of character haven't I used it? It was like a Kenku. Oh, great. Yeah, perfect. We'll make we'll make them adorable. Um and also was inspired by uh um our friend oh Kumbalai in the chat actually. Uh Adam was writing a game with us and they played a, a Kenku named Cleric. And like their speech patterns, like really inspired me, and I took that over to Q. Um, but with the exception of, uh, I kind of did their voice, and then also this like secondary, like somebody is teaching them like phrases, because normally Kenku don't really speak with their own voice, but this this Q is trying to learn with their own voice. So it was like, but you kind of have this vocal coach that'll come in every once in a while that. They're like, these are the words we're practicing. <laughs> and we'd we'd gone to a Renaissance fair like a couple of weekends back now. And uh, I dropped all of you guys back off in Toronto. And on the drive home, I was just like practicing like, what are the what what is what is the voice? What is that secondary guy? What is what is Carrick from the other game we played in sound like? And I, I just practiced a bunch of voices on the way home. <laughs> Aw, you could have done that when we were in the car. <laughs> that <laughs> bird noise was so good. Mm, yeah. Yeah. How just added that? Yeah, it added such a little <laughs> that, to, it, to it. Yeah. How'd you, how'd you do that? Tell that, me, Denny. I actually wasn't prepared with that. That just kind of started happening. I was like, okay, this is this is part You're of that now. Feeling the character. Denny became the bird. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Be <laughs> the bird. <laughs> I also practiced character's voice in my car. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. Dude. I love it. Sometimes a character just possesses you while you're playing them. And I think that's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, do, 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 do. Yeah, so Q um, basically says, you know, get rooms and, you know, meet back up with me and then we'll figure out this whole Cadway situation. Um, so, yeah, so we get rooms at this uh, local inn whose name I forget probably was the important. Miner's Arms. Miner's Arms. Um, great. And then, yeah, we briefly discussed a little bit about the whole, like, how does Sarze keep finding us thing, which we didn't really come to a conclusion on, and there's nothing we can do about it anyway, so it seems like really. Um, I do hate 
a little lore drop about these fucking like tracking creatures from other planes that exist. I don't like that. It's a little freaky. Um, so yeah, I don't hope, I hope we never in interact with one of those. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Um, Oh my god, we're just getting lore about other kankus now. Or something. We're just talking about birds in chat. Yeah, I love it. Um, wonderful. Leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so then we meet back up with Q and we go to Adway's house to really pop this whole thing off. Um, Q, the precious bean, tells us that it's haunted because um, <laughs> she went in there and heard voices and... Um, yeah, I love her. Uh, so yeah, we went in to see for ourselves. I the ghosties. Just, yeah, ghost friends. We because we we can handle them now. You know, we we've I learned our lesson. Confident. Yeah, we're ready to fight some fucking ghosts. Um, but we didn't have to, so that kind of sucked. But as it turns out, the ghost was none other than Nick's character. Way to scare the pants off of the perfect. Kenku NPC, how could you? Um, I was just singing a song, man. It just hap <laughs> it just happened to be in deep speech. Did you learn it at the farmers market? No, I learned that one probably at least five hundred years ago. I got yeah. bored a long time ago. Inquire. Yeah, he wrote that. <laughs> I wrote that. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> it's the song that it's basically the song that never ends, but it, the lyrics are more akin to "I am bored." Please entertain me. <laughs> Right, yeah, out of this just... cupboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So now that we're in the portion that actually included our guest, uh, Denny, you wanted to speak a little bit about, um, you know, how you prep for a guest to come onto the show and kind of the deceptions that you like to pull on us um, prior to the episode. <laughs> Well, I mean, and Nick can kind of speak to this as well, because seeing as he is the guest that got to experience that prep. So uh, I'll, I'm going to pass it over to him, actually, so we can hear his voice. Nick, how was that kind of prep experience to join us on a show as a character with specific purpose, kind of? Yeah, no, it was it was great. I'll, I'll speak to the prep first. Sorry. Um, the prep was fun. Danny just came up to you and they... But you cut out there. I'm muted for some reason. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Denny asked if I want to be a guest. I'm like, dude, I've wanted nothing more in my life. I looked him in the <laughs> eyes and I said, I'll make a character right now. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's like, okay, cool. So what do you, what have you been wanting to try? Like, what's something new? You played a long time. Like, what haven't you done yet? I thought about it for a good second. I'm like, you know, I've always wanted to play an inanimate object. I've just wanted to be a piece of the scenery. Um, and which slowly evolved into me having a character stuck in a ball, which I thought was hilarious. And um, we had a couple ideas of what it was going to be. And I think I used both of them. Like initially the idea was just a head floating in a ball, but then I thought it'd be hilarious if I was like a person in a room inside a ball. Um, and then I got to thinking about backstory and all that fun stuff. And then, but uh, Denny sent me this, you know, super duper prepped, document full of information of things that my character knows the history that i know because i've been her my character was over a thousand years old so i had to know about like when the dragons were around and all this different stuff and god denny you are so goddamn prepared it's it's disgusting <laughs> like when I, when, when I dm i put down a couple bullet points and i'm like we'll figure it out <laughs> denny's out here writing lore like J.R. tolkien um yeah, no, it was a really cool experience. Denny is amazing. And then we've played together a bunch. So I think that we had kind of an understanding of how we play. And he just kind of let me do kind of whatever my creative juices wanted to do, which was really awesome. And it, I kept making stuff up even while I was playing. And he was awesome about it. Um, no, really cool. Well, yeah, I mean, our relationship as far as like Dungeons and Dragons goes, like you've been my DM on several occasions, so I know what you're fully capable of. So I was like, anything you create on the fly, 
I fully trust you're not going to, you know, destroy this campaign. <laughs> but you are going to create some funny moments and some, some like, understanding of how this setting works. Like, you're going to kind of abide by it, but maybe push against the barriers a little bit, which is totally fine. You did great. Yeah, I had to think about um, how my character would fit into the story, because, like, I had to go with the mantra of here for a good time, not a long time. So I had to try and figure out like what my goals were and how I can make those goals kind of happen in, you know, three, four hours. Um, and so like I thought to myself, I, um, I would try and contribute something to you guys. And I think that I managed to do that with the true sight I gave to, to Nell. Um, I was a divination wizard, which my idea, my initial idea was like, oh, they're going to ask me to scry or tell the future. Um, but I ended up doing that. And I'm like, oh, OK, good enough. I don't have to, like, press them to, to let me <laughs> do anything else. We probably should have gone with scrying or telling the future, though. That sounds way more useful. What huh. if we were Weird. smart and or... we had asked you to scry? Or, mm. or asking about the lore mm. of a thousand year old wizard. That's right. I, I was, I'm my own crystal ball. Like, you didn't even need to bring me to a font or anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God uh, damn it. Uh, 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 <laughs> we had combat to get through, man. We didn't have time oh, to chit chat. God. We were six hours in, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, like, I think Denny set a really good pace in the dungeon that I was able to get in and out of your story in such a clean way and uh, very natural and organic. Also, you freaking just throwing in like he bought me at a farmer's market, freaking killed. <laughs> well, I got killed so everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. I'm like, I want to go to this fucking farmer's market. <laughs> I, I feel like now you have to have a farmer's market in every town that they visit, Denny. I'm yeah. so We're sorry. We're going to be asking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like that and brunch now are like our two things. <laughs> 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 Yeah, every time you come to a city, oh, what day is the farmer's market, Danny? It's not today. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> not we'll the, it'll never day. be this day. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk super briefly about like how us as like a group um, were feeling when we knew Nick was coming on because we had some theories. I was so convinced. Like, I was like, well, maybe. I'm like, I don't, I didn't ever actually think you were going to play Dan the Paladin. So I was like, I'm so certain that those reigns have been passed over in this version of the world now to Denny's. Like, that seems like likely. But I was like, oh, what if he, is he Cadway? Like, what's going on? So I love that it was like, neither. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to subvert expectations. Oh, me too. Oh, gosh. So for the for the people out there, like they would have gotten to see this. But we hop into the call, like maybe like 45 minutes ahead of showtime to do our sound and our whatnot. And everybody sees like the cast sees the overlay. And I had Nick's up and it specifically like said, da old man, Dan. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I made this just for the intro here. <laughs> 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 and like well, I, think I, mean, I, was in the... I yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure about it, but then when we were like, oh, it's ghosts, and I was like, wait a minute, is he playing the ghost of Dan? Hold on. Yeah, which I, I hadn't even thought of until like that, that'd it started be pretty kind neat. of falling together. I was like, oh my god, they really think Dan's dead here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I think I I had missed like the original conversation everyone had about the overlay because I was in the washroom when I came hmm. back and I was like he wouldn't do that. I'm like, Daddy is so fucking tricky. Like, tricksy. Trick. What is the word I'm trying to say? Tricky? Tricky. Jesus Christ. Woo! <laughs> Doing well. Um, told you guys, the energy is getting weird. Episode three, here it goes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just knew. I was like, this just, it's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. But I will say, and I think I told you guys after the session, these are Danny's exact words. <laughs> Any way I can fuck with the players is great. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That tracks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That adds up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Seems right. Um... You're going to get yours, Denny. You're going to get <laughs> We're going to get you someday. <laughs> oh, we're going to get you. <laughs> You'll never catch me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, oh yeah, moving on. You talked a little bit about uh, the creation of your 
character, um, which I loved. Um, but we also learn briefly in that moment a little bit about your former tower, the Nest of Plants, which of course is the Tower of the Sphinx. Um, Dallas. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, no, I go ahead. I mean, I can't confirm that. My character wouldn't know that. It's in the same spot. It might be. From what you told me, it's in roughly Nick, the same I, area. I love you, Nick. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm curious as well. Like how, I don't know, like how you guys fit these things together. Like how, like this is something that's obviously like important to the overall plot of the story. We've talked about the Tower of the Sphinx a couple of times now. It's come up. So how do you, Denny, like figure out like your like when a guest is coming in, how are you like, this is how I'm going to fit them into like the larger lore. Like what is the, how, how do you decide that's the thing versus something else? I, I work backwards, you know, like mm -hmm. it's like, these are the things that are already in place. Like I can't change what's already been said. Um, at least not with great difficulty. So it's like, how can I work anything new in? I find like the spots that haven't been, discovered or that haven't been elaborated on yet and it's like all right this gives us an opportunity to flesh this out further so um the the, the world is big there's plenty of opportunities for me to do this over and over again there's plenty yeah. of opportunities within nick's backstory i could for example if another guest showed up and was like i want to do this i could slide them into nick's backstory right yeah, I guess I, I'm concerned. I feel like, yeah, we kind of had to rush a little bit, I think. Like, this episode went long. Um, but the more I was thinking about it afterwards, the more I was like, D where did we send him? Because you were like, oh, like, my tower. And we're like, not your tower anymore, bud. But yeah, go there, bye. But like, is, is that tower been taken over by sphinxes? Like, what's going on there? Where did we send you? Well, I'm concerned dead, that we've man. made an enemy. Well, to be fair, we didn't send him. Like, he made that choice. And I, know, I think, but, like, we had given the information you know. that, like, oh, there's a different tower there now. I'm fairly certain, like, someone said that. Yeah, so I, I, I feel like, I mean, Plons is, like, an upper-level wizard. Like, I feel like he had kind of an idea, you know? Maybe, right? Nick? Yeah, I guess so. I just, <laughs> yeah. I, I told Denny where I wanted to be teleported. I don't know where Denny put me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're. I don't know because you were like, "Oh, all my followers," and I'm like, "I don't. It's a different tower now. Where did we? Uh oh." Go, go, going going back to when Who's Nick there? said anything I can do to fuck with the players. Unfortunately, and despite him kind of being on the DM <laughs> side, he's also now technically one of the players. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. you're at the Brule what, Bar Farmers uh, Market. Uh, you're gonna find me at the bottom of the ocean, like, in, a, <laughs> in a chest well, like, at a farmers what, market. <laughs> from what we've heard, there are, like, wizards in those towers. Like, there are other people there now from what we know. Well, now there's so... a, maybe another spherical one. <laughs> uh, yes. 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 Are so... they going to be chill with you just showing up and be like, this is my tower? This is uh... regular wizard shit, right? I'm sure at least every 20 years a wizard shows up right, and says it's their wizard. tower. <laughs> yeah. yeah, honestly. Like, that just felt... It's so funny you're so concerned about it, Dallas. I had, like, no qualms about it at all. I was like, yeah, wizard shit. Like, they get into fucking probably, like, territory tips all the time. <laughs> Like All he'll figure it out. Like part of me was like, well, I don't know how. Like, I was like, I don't know how he thinks he's gonna get out of the ball. But yeah, well, <laughs> well, I figured he thought he had something in his tower, but his tower's been taken over by other people. I'm <laughs> worried about him. <laughs> That's really yeah, now that, yeah, that you, now that you bring it up, I'm a little worried, too. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should have argued more in the moment to be like, I don't know if you actually want to go back there. We should maybe think this through a little bit. I mean, Plance's whole thing was he was very, like, let's say fair. Like, he had been yeah. in he'd been in that ball for so long that he'd kind of just not given a shit anymore. Like, I feel like the first hundred years was just him violently trying to get out of this ball and like i went through all the stages of grief and i feel like i'm just at acceptance right now so i'm just kind of riding the wave mm. it feels very wizardly to because if you're a wizard you're at the point of a tower like you're big into experimentation uh point proven by the fact that you're trapped in a ball so that's like very wizardly to be like well 
This is a fun experiment. Let's see where this fucked up teleportation circle takes me. Oh, woo! <laughs> Probably couldn't get worse. Yeah. It's another experiment. Oops. It got yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it probably could. <laughs> well, we might be going back to that tower one day, so I guess we'll find out. <laughs> now you're like stuck between two sphinxes and you're like a tennis ball caught between two cats. Oh, cute. <laughs> They're just batting oh, you around. No. <laughs> I like that sounds that. dizzying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, from our initial meeting with Plants, we learned a little bit about um, how Cadway was collaborating with Percival, who fully had written that guy off. <laughs> I just was like, this twerp compared to the other two? Who cares? But, um... Mm -hmm. guy, he's uh, the guy with the money. Yeah. yeah he's, he's and the also, every shot that was taken on him missed. Mm. I don't know what you're talking about, Denny. I killed at least four Bitch. Percivals that night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I fully don't even remember him from that fight, and it's a little bit impression. He escaped, that I think. Right? Up. He was yeah, the one who ran like, away. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The only impression he left on me was when Dallas and I immediately called that he was bad news from his like body language <laughs> in that pub. We were just like, we know. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Not surprised. I had to change everything. <laughs> <laughs> give him uh, disguise self. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, so we ventured down into Cadway's workshop, which I'm so stoked. It was like a harpsichord thing. Because the moment you mentioned that harpsichord, I'm like, oh, see door. I was like, if we hadn't immediately found flaws, I was going to go fuck with that thing. So that would be really happy. Um, but uh, yeah, so we head down there and it's just Automaton City. Um, so we start kind of piecing together the fact that it seems like Cadway was who you know, designed the Century Bot 2000 that we encountered at the bid. Um, and kind of like could see his like process as he was developing uh, these things. Um, I guess, was this like kind of a weird moment for Rhea at all to be like, oh, this person that works for the Arcanet that we're trying to find uh, fully like is on the other side, which actually yeah. got confirmed by the letter that we found. Yeah, I guess it was a little strange. I feel there's like this level of like, I'm like, ah, anyone can betray anyone at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely have a lot of feelings about the fact that I was like, you know, I feel like we vet, it, vet our people well. I was like, wasting his talents. Yeah, it's like almost. But also, I get it. Like, you know, there's that researcher part of me that's like, ooh, something's forbidden. What do I do to pursue it? So there's that part of me that's like, I still want to know more about this void magic. Was it that the. Is like the automaton research forbidden? Was that. What, there was like something in the letter from from Pars from Bubbly P was that what he wrote? <laughs> Bubbly P! <laughs> yeah. Bubbly Which, P. It, after the fact, after you guys were like, oh, that's a terrible code name, it just like, I kept thinking about it and I'm like, oh, it's worse. Oh, now it's even worse. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But uh, I think there was something in there that had said that like, oh, because the, the, you know, the Arcanet won't let you pursue the research you are. So I think there's something more than just robots that he's making. Well, I mean, the fact that all the robots he's making are very violent <laughs> probably doesn't help. <laughs> also, what's with all the fucking meat? Yeah, he was like growing a black pudding or something in his... Well, yeah, that fucking shop. ooze. I still don't even know what the hell that was. Nasty. Um, Maybe he's trying to yeah. put it inside of an automaton to make like an ooze bot. Oh. But... Don't bad. give Denny ideas. Oh, no. <laughs> that's I think Denny's that's, already thought that's, of that. Yeah, that's all yeah. After Party is. I so, don't like that. It's a robot that just, like, its weapon is it just shoots oozes at you and molds. Yeah. Yep. That and it self-destructs. That's the DM pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you know, self-destructing robot. Put it in the show. <laughs> Great. Well, I hope we never fucking have to fight that thing. Um... Ooh, I did want to talk really quickly about the whole true sight thing. Yeah, we could have been smart and scryed, but fuck, that true sight was so good. Oh, it was really cool. I was so happy to to have that. Like, 
damn. Um, also, Adam, I am so happy you thought to have me look at you because oh, I'm really excited to have that conversation later. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, was desperately trying to find a good part to say it, and then Denny was like, and the door slammed shut behind you, and I'm like, if I don't do it now, <laughs> we'll be dead. Yeah. <laughs> good on you for interjecting, because I would have been, like, furious if you had, like, later been like, oh, I was going to ask this, and then didn't. I'm like... You see Abe's dead body. Is he different? Oh, my God. <laughs> what does he look like? Oh, so mad. Um, but, of course, I need to know, Denny left that description of what Abe's human form looks like up to you. Were you like how confident were you feeling with that description? Like, is that like what Pascalis looks like, or was that just like a random? Did uh, I supposed to also support that question? At this point, when I said, I imagine you know who it is at this point. Like, did you feel confident you knew who it was? Yeah, for sure. Um, especially when you said that it was a human soul. I was like, okay, the, the, my mm. my car drag theory is out the window. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I wanted to talk about because I was like, you had this great moment of sending us a beautiful tinfoil hat theory yeah. about you potentially being car drag, which blew my mind. I was like, that would have been so interesting if that had been the case. Oh. Um, so, you know, I'm a little disappointed that that's not it, but I guess <laughs> things can only get so convoluted, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for like, did. Did you already have a physical description of Pascalis? Uh, or did you just make that? Um, I think I had a loose idea of, of what I would think he would look like. Like from the context of he's an adventurer, he's a warrior, he's, you know, got an artistic side to him. Thinking of like Aragorn, uh, Boromir, Elendil from Rings of Power, all that kind of stuff. Um, so just having that context, I hope that it wasn't, if you've ever thought about what he looked like, Daddy, that it wasn't too, you know, aggressively different than what you pictured. Um, my, my visions of Pascalis, I've always kept them fully plate, like helmet. So I never thought about the appearance. I knew at some point somebody else was going to be Pascalis. So I've left whatever he looked like. How could you possibly know that? What? <laughs> oh yeah, what my the... <laughs> God. Oh, threads it's this like man. this might have been in my thoughts for a very long time. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Oh, like, no. I'd, like, even, what? <laughs> I'd even considered what is... in the prequel campaign, I'm like, who is Pascalis now? Oh, and he never came wow. up then. Fascinating. Huh. What? Like so Spartacus. Wait, you, just, you always thought his soul was going to go into someone? Yeah. And then Adam just happened to make, <laughs> make perfect the perfect mode. <laughs> what the f fuck? <laughs> this game is so fucked, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I so, hate this. If I if I may, a big old tinfoil hat. Like, oh, let's get it on. The brim is covering my eyes. Yeah. I can't see anything. Like That's Gideon's okay. hat sized tinfoil hat. <laughs> Um, we have ashes of a hero. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> They're relevant. Pascalis was burned alive. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. I definitely want to ask Elowin if she could cast Identify on the ashes. The problem is that Identify doesn't work for non-magical items at least in the yeah. spell description assuming i read it correctly because i am very bad at understanding spells apparently i mean i was a divination wizard <clears throat> yeah we probably Stop. got that guy <laughs> talking about me you. nick <laughs> you know actually we're not interested in talking to nick anymore yeah <laughs> so i in a way i'm a little sad that i told you guys right now because i feel like that would have been a huge moment during the session but you know it's just act surprised. I will. I'm definitely about to add it to the the current lore, our group lore doc, just our theories at the bottom. Just it, I just have to. I'm so sorry. Um, but then I'll try and for forget it because you know it's it's fine. All right, time to get the uh, true resurrection and just bring back whatever the fuck that thing is. Yep. Watch that be Cardrack. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh-oh. <laughs> well, it's funny, too, because Drac pulled the jar out, or the jug, urn, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and to Philanore was like, is this you? And I'm just sitting there like, it could be me. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> oh, so funny. Now, I'm just going to add, if this jar, for example, was Pascalis the Brave, the true, re- true resurrection spell doesn't work on things older than 200 years dead. Well, we don't hey, really? need it because yep. we already have him. Because oh. what would happen if it... Oh, can we make clones? What Hold would on. happen? This is the thing that that's how is... doppelgangers are made. This oh, infinite oh, money glitch. We're oh, cracking infinite this infinite wide money. open. <laughs> this is the sole conversation that like fucks with me. Cause it's like, if if we did cast it, what would happen? We would just like leave like Abe's. Uh, yeah. oh. Fucking hell! Would Abe All right. Just be an empty husk, and then there's this dude husk. there that's like, I used to be Abe. The, uh, hey, it's me, Pascalos. I'm back. I guess, okay. like, Wait. you know, the soul has to be willing to come back into the body when you cast, like, a resurrection spell. So I feel like the soul would, if it was possible to bring his real body back from those ashes, if it was, would leave Abe's body and go into that one, and Abe would just be a husk. Hey, My guys? My concern there is that he would, Abe, would then become he whose hunger is unending. Because no, I do not, not believe that he again. was defeated. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Okay. What is the what is the wording on true resurrection? You just do you need you don't do you need any part of the body or do you what do you need? Uh, okay, here we go. You touch a creature that has been dead for no longer than two hundred years and that died for any reason except old age. If the creature saw is free and willing, the creature is restored to life with all its hit points. The spell closes all wounds, neutralizes any poisons, cures all disease, lifts any curses affecting the creature when it died. The spell replaces damaged or missing organs and limbs. If the creature was undead, it is restored to non-undead form. The spell can even provide a new body if the original long- no longer exists, in which case you must speak the creature's name. The creature then appears in an occupied space you choose within 10 feet of you. You need... A sprinkle of holy water and twenty-five thousand gold pieces worth of diamonds to cast this spell. What? Easy. Uh, yeah. Easy. What is what is the one Don't. that you have to roll because you go into a new body? That's I think just resurrection. Reincarnate. Reincarnation. Reincarnation. Okay. Okay. So forget about fucking true resurrection. It's gone. What if we? Okay. The hat's getting bigger. It's down below my chin now. <laughs> if we were. Th- <laughs> Hey, hear me out, guys. If we were to kill Abe, if we were to kill Abe and just like dismantle his body, and I cast not me, but someone cast reincarnation, what would happen? Because it would be a different body. Fuck well, around, find when, out. When Rhea becomes <laughs> a level twenty druid <laughs> in another lifetime, they'll do it. <laughs> well, isn't it just so lucky that we're going around fighting? High level druids, because uh, I have a theory that I need to test. So, okay, Abe, stand still. You think these now, are just gonna fuck around like that. Hey, I well, know. No, you've, I'm just gonna ask them. I, I know we've killed you in the past, but you were you were a zealot barbarian back then. You, you want to try it one more time? Would you just for fun? I know, like you were trying to like save the world and whatnot, but hear me out. New body. Hear me out. I want to eat food. The whole conversation. I'm just because in reincarnation, what oh, happens this is to great. the old? What happens to the old body? Well, it, right. I believe it's the old body kind of becomes the new body. So this is, the is perfect true. solution because then there's nothing left behind for Malden to fuck with. And like, well, I don't know. I mean, like, you what? might not know, know that because the body of Abe is technically a legendary material. Might not follow the same rules as an organic body. Well, we won't know till we try. <laughs> what level is reincarnate? Is that six? Uh, that seems right. I don't, I don't know. It's fifth. I'm wow. Just, I'm just curious. That's mm. all. No, curious anyway. is great. Magic is <laughs> awesome. Well, because now I'm like, well, is there any no, other magic. way to, to like have a body for Abe that's not the Arkenfolk body. Oh, okay. But they can't be dead for no longer than 10 days, so... Well, we would do it right away. I'm not gonna kill him. And yeah, we're not just we're... gonna kill him now. I'm not just gonna kill him now. I'm gonna wait until we have 
<laughs> Obviously. Oh, I think I missed the uh, the through thread there of like who we were resurrecting. I thought we were talking about the ashes. <laughs> no, I'm killing Abe's current body to bring him back in a better new body. <laughs> Don't let them tell you no. who you want to be, Abe. Oh, no. I'm just curious. It, okay, it's fine. Here's you, Abe is perfect. He doesn't need a new body. No, he doesn't, but if he wanted one, I just feel bad he can't eat anything with us. Or that's the reason. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to talk to Abe about this. Not that I would fucking know any of this in character, but one day I'll, I'll figure <laughs> so it out. So, Abe, I've been thinking. Yeah, I've been thinking, what if I murdered you and then brought you back with a spell that I don't have and can never use anyway? <laughs> Just that. Okay. Um, Fantastic anyway. tinfoil, though. Woof. Uh, um, actually, I'm gonna... I do attach to this kind of... Um, Christy, you asked me another question when you had that true sight. Did you want to talk about that right now? Mm -mm -mm. I want it to be a reveal. Thank you. Fantastic. Though. No, no, no. I mean, you've also had the wonderful, you, you noticed that light that was on the roof. Yeah, that was really fucking helpful. <laughs> I was like, oh, what's that about? Doesn't matter. And then um, it was important, turns out. I just thought it was some fuckery to do with plants. So I didn't even like think about it. It just like left my mind immediately. I was like, oh, <laughs> it's probably... what did you think it was? I really could not tell you. Well, out of character, I was thinking maybe it was like a scrying orb because yeah. I was thinking about like in campaign two of Critical Role, like how common yeah. that was. And then I think I went on like an ADHD ch tangent in my own head about like, oh, it's so annoying that none of us has that ability that Ford had to constantly see those. And then I just forgot about the light being relevant. <laughs> well, that's mean. a good thought though. I didn't even consider that. Yeah. Hmm. And I guess maybe it was kind of in a way because clearly it was something that like triggered the shit locking behind us so yeah oh. um tis fine um and also like i didn't know enough about how plants his magic works so i thought maybe like oh he just turned into a light or that light is like where he like went and will fall through or yeah something um but yeah so we continue to explore the workshop did anything we found the teleportation circle um and then the meat room yum yummy um and then we activated the automatons good we hit that red button and we felt good about it um why did Rhea hit the button because I told them to. <laughs> did you? Why did you Drax tell them to? Drax said hit the you button. You are not allowed to talk, Christy. No, yeah. I am. This is this. No, you are I not. Am, I am actually fully on Christy's side on this. Do you, I'm, I was going to save this for later, but I can get into it right fucking now if you guys want. <laughs> I, will, I am serious. Denny has heard this already, but I will get into it. Do you guys want to? it. Whatever happened, I didn't do it. No, I'll save it because we're going to have a separate conversation told me to. further down. But I, I will talk about it. <laughs> um how did everyone feel about this encounter i thought it was a super fun battle um because i just really enjoyed how many different automatons and things there were to interact with um because it just felt like there was a bunch of crazy stuff happening on the field that was like all different and i really enjoyed that um mm -hmm. thoughts it was a cool battle um this was like so uh, when it started, I was like, oh, there's this really cool shot I've got on all these things. And then Elowen pushed everything out of the way and that drove me nuts. So he, I was like, no, but then they all flew and beat me up anyways. So then I was like, it didn't matter. <laughs> but I was like, there's a, an Yay. ability that the learned <laughs> class gets that I'll be able to take in a few bits uh, to get a better initiative. And after that, I'm like, I want that. <laughs> Just yell at me. I don't have to push him. Oh, I assumed you did. I don't know how your shit works. I don't have to. I just do. Why would I? Didn't matter. I? They all came towards me that were like in the line and just went. Pa, pa, pa. Yeah, they really chose you for that one for sure. Because oh, you yeah. were like separated from us, so you were an easier. Yeah, target. I didn't realize I was, and I think this is like happened was because I was like, oh yeah. You know, I asked Denny for the thing that I do, and he's like, yeah, I'll take a bit. And I was like, okay. Uh, and so then everyone else, like, was there and then wasn't. And was I was like, I don't know where people are now. And then I was like, I'm alone. 
I definitely also... thought the workshop was a lot smaller than yeah. it actually was. Yeah. Was I fully yeah. misinterpreted how that whole thing looked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, it's hard. Also, I didn't even like, realize that teleportation circle was there until the end of the like the entire fight when we went up there. I was like, "Oh, this <laughs> is what everyone's talking about." Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, also like the battle map, like there were two sections that were opened up that weren't originally part like there as part of the exploration. So the room was technically bigger right. than before, but also had to be big enough to you know build giant death robots. That makes sense. My brain was like, did not scale that, though. <laughs> My brain was like, this guy has a single income, uh, no <laughs> kids, small upstairs. This is going to be like a 20 by 20 basement. Tops. For sure. Yeah, well, tops. now he's got that bubbly pee money, so. Yeah. <laughs> Upgrading, baby. <laughs> it nice I want to hear more there. about... Nick and how you like chose to do your spell casting. It was super interesting. Yeah, I had a question about that because I also wanted you to elaborate a bit too on like if it hadn't been me, what it would have looked like. Because I'm curious. Sure. Yeah, I had a couple ideas for a couple of the characters. So for obviously for you, I was gonna play up the wild magic, and I thought that was a blast. Um, oh my god, it was so fun. I felt so fucking powerful because I had someone competent with me. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so for Gideon, it was going to be, like, buffed bullets and teleportations. Oh. Um, so I was like, fireball bullets, stuff like that. Oh. Um, <laughs> so cool. Why did they uh, let you leave? What? <laughs> um, I think my favorite one, though, was for Logan. Um, I wasn't going to be able to cast any spells through Logan, but <laughs> Logan could cast higher level spells through me. Oh. That's what my plan was for that one. Um, with Drac, it was going to be a lot of like dragon elemental um, stemming from you. Um, that, that was the idea. And honestly, I had no idea what to do with Abe. I, I, I didn't know enough about Abe. And I think I was just going to treat it as like a buff all your attacks kind of thing. A like, fireball axe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds safe. <laughs> oh, dude, that's a really cool idea for him. Dynamite hammer. Yeah, you deal yeah. on his ass. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my favorite um, action of the of the encounter was like the, the disintegration swipe that Nell did, and it would have been a bunch of those with like with Abe and stuff. Oh, can I just say I already talked about this a little bit, but that was so goddamn satisfying for like me personally because I have such a like trauma around that goddamn spell so to like have it like work in such a beautiful way i was like finally yeah. validation here add 78 damage and oh. disintegrate the blob also fucking jesus that enemy was supposed to be so interesting especially since you slashing damaged it because <laughs> it's supposed to multiply right? it's supposed to multiply <laughs> when you do slashing damage to it oh Oops. my god poof Sucks to suck. <laughs> but I mean, I'm glad you had a good moment. Yeah, Just well, needs that... another ch another chance to throw in a black pudding at some point. Yeah, from the <laughs> fucking ooze bot. Um, well, this was just such a, like a night and day for me combat wise compared to the last one that I was just like loving it. I'm like, yeah, I'm actually being effective. Yeah. Uh, did you have any ideas as to what would happen if Elwyn had used you? Um. No, I didn't actually. But uh fine, I'm just the other full magic user. Three right? Eldritch Blasts. <laughs> well, well and, and that and that's that's probably Woo! that that's probably why. I think I, I think because I definitely would have left yours to like think of in the moment. I don't know if I would have just buffed all your spells. Like if you would cast it at level two, I would have like not cast at level six, kind of thing. I think that's probably what I would have done, just because you were the other full magic user. Um either that or um, I would have just acted as a like plus two or three um, magic uh, focus kind of thing, and and I cast like bonus actions or help or stuff like that for you. That was my idea. Yeah, I think and, it's good you ended up where you did. You had a lot of really fun moments with Christy. Yeah, not for sure. And who did you suspect would end up wielding you? Uh. I thought it was going to be Gideon, because Ryan likes shiny things. <laughs> yeah. 
I think it worked out well because I mentioned this too, but um, your character choice really resembles um, a character from a book series that I really love. So I was just super enamored immediately. And I was like, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I have this rope I never use. I want I want. Fair I want the helpful awesome. wizard. Great use of the rope. H have you yeah. guys ever seen um, The Dragon Prince on Netflix? Yeah. Uh, so the, the mirrored wizard reminds me a lot of this character. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Wait a minute, that guy's not a good guy. Yeah, what? Nick Nick after the fact told me that he's like, I think I unconsciously made the mirror wizard from Dragon Prince. Yeah, it was after I made it that I'm like, oh shit, it is exactly the same. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> nah, it's still great. No. Yeah, I love it. God, just having a full level wizard is just so nice. I've, wizards are good. Yeah, and I tried to make it a intent to like only use the big spells at kind of key moments because it would have I could have thrown out like six level spells five level spells the whole time, but I don't think it was really worth it. Yeah, that's fair. Wait, you're saying we could have finished that combat in under four hours? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah. If if maybe if wild magic wasn't so chaotic. Yeah. For real. <laughs> um. Yeah. So one of the other big moments during this uh, fight was. Well, it was, Ryan got bit by a confusion snake. Is that what yeah. it was? Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, Ryan? Because clearly Gideon was like already having such a good mental time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I when I sit down and I think about this character, and I'm like, I've had so many thoughts. Like, if somebody casts dominate person on him, or if someone casts like suggestion on him, or whatever, but. I forgot confusion was a thing. And Denny bit me <laughs> with this damn snake and was like, you're suffering from confusion. And then my brain was immediately like, okay, so why does Gideon have a chance to shoot one of his friends in this moment? Like what is causing him to do that? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, yikes. Like, and he just got pumped full of chemicals, I assume. Uh, so what are these chemicals? Okay, probably hallucinogens in there. Um, What's he hallucinating? Um, maybe the event. I don't know. May, let's roll. Let's run with it. And then I just kind of did that. But in the moment, you'll see like when, when Danny's like, I made a clip of it because I fucking. <laughs> Danny's like, yeah, you got confusion. I was like, oh shit. I'm just slumped in my chair. I'm just oh like, no. I'm like, no, I'm about to get real sad. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you're gonna feel things. It was yeah. incredibly lucky that it was a random target, and you rolled the number of the freaking snake. Yeah, I was gonna blunderbuss whatever it was. Um, that was my my uh, instinct there. I was, he's gonna pull out the biggest gun he has and fire it at whatever is terrifying him. So uh, I'm glad it was the snake. That's good. Especially the one that you had advantage on. <laughs> yes, that was that was also good. Yeah, I think that would have been a problem if he'd gone after Azaria. I don't think they were doing too hot. Oh, I God. would have died, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Straight up, my head would be against the wall. I had like 3 HP at that point. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> There's still a diamond in the party. <laughs> yep. That would have been, oh my God, just like the layers that would have fucking added to Gideon's whole drama <laughs> no i i would have i think i would have retired gideon at that point if he no, uh fair. if he killed me fair um we'll get into like more of it later but i really enjoyed ryan that we just had like that nice parallel of both of us hanging out in the trauma corner um yeah, <laughs> yeah you helped me then i helped you yeah mm, i liked that so cute i love that moment yeah the moment that like i was able to get through to you i was like yes success. especially because i had just been a potted plant so wasn't yep. doing too much. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you saw, but during the session, when that confusion got put on me, I actually went to my shelf and grabbed my Cthulhu book and started reading the insanity section. <laughs> <laughs> just like, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Um, okay, before I get really angry at everyone here. Um, was there anything else from <laughs> this uh, fight that you guys wanted to um, discuss at all? I just want to say I think you did a great job. Christine. You did You did the right yeah. thing. 
There's no reason uh, to be mad at anybody. I think everyone did a great job here. Everyone played their parts really well. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say oh. MVP Elowin for banishing the stone. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Very yes. different fight if oh. that thing hadn't uh, uh, disappeared. Why was Dallas so upset that we were introducing a second thing three turns before my banished thing was going to come back? Because I'd spent the whole fight, whole fight <laughs> hiding away, trying to make sure I kept that thing away from us. Once again, Elowin's trying to keep the party safe, and the party seems <laughs> destined to kill themselves. But oh, we didn't, good. so it, we um, took care of look, it. You have <laughs> thoughts in your mind that you're trying to do during a fight that you're not communicating to anyone else because <laughs> it seems like there's stuff that you need to work on communication wise. Um, That's fair. <laughs> so, you know, you make your choice. You can, And if you don't tell us, I can't help you. Um, but anywho, that part, I understand why Ellen would be frustrated in that, and that is not where I have an issue. Um, the issue is one, firstly, out of character, Logan was like, do it. And then I did it and you were like, <laughs> why did you do that? And I was like, <laughs> Rhea's like well, sorry, that was like, Rhea's like, why would you um, do this? Out of character, I fucking love the chaos. Uh, Logan <laughs> is about that, it's why I pressed the button. <laughs> so this is where I, I still take offense and I've had this argument before, but, and Denny heard it recently as well. <laughs> Rhea also does things like off book all of the time and like no one calls them out on it and it like like the fucking bid like we had this plan of how it was going to go and you immediately did something different and I was like okay like you're drawing attention to us like we had a plan and then you're like oh the bean oh press the button like I'm like everyone that looks at Nell when she like does something chaotic because I get it I proc it more so like it makes sense like I'm the target of it but I am not alone in this because literally like 10 minutes later we had a goddamn fucking conversation about the deck of many things and Eleanor's like yo you know I probably pull it like yeah you would because the concept of chaos is fucking enticing so don't put your <laughs> bullshit on me because if you were in my shoes you could do the exact same goddamn thing so there <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, it's only gonna get worse. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what do you it's, mean? It's just, Forget it's just funny. It's interesting because, like, I think a lot of like Nell's <laughs> drama is about the fact that she feels like she fucks up a lot, and it's like obviously I'm getting that from this too. But there's part of it that it's like maybe I'm also like not entirely like there I think it's okay maybe sometimes so I mean, it might have just re it might have activated anyways when we were doing something else and got like a fucking surprise round on us anyway so why let all that damage go to waste <laughs> that's all I'm saying yeah <clears throat> realistically those harpoons that came out of there didn't do a whole bunch I got hit real hard by one of them but otherwise one of them just eventually gave up and killed yeah, himself. I, I was I was like, this this robot learned emotions, and the emotion was depression, and fell into the pit. Yeah, not hard to do. Looking at our party, it's a millennial. <laughs> it's a millennial. <laughs> oh, hmm. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna change because I'm feeling like I'd shaded. Um, <laughs> Anthony actually submitted this. Big fan of the show. Anthony submitted this next question. <laughs> um, Happy uh, to be here. This session, we learned of a certain magical deck of cards potentially located at the Tower of the Sphinx, formerly the Nest of Flaunts. The effects of this deck are often game-changing. Sorry. And could completely Maybe, <laughs> perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. And can completely Allegedly pull a campaign off of its proverbial rails. Without spoiling anything, can you talk about your mindset behind possibly bringing this deck into our game? Denny. Do it. Eat it. That's not that's not what you do with the deck, though, Denny. Do it. You could. Do you get all the cards if you eat it? Yeah, true. <laughs> you just pull all of them? You summon Exodia with your bunk. You become the deck of many things if you eat it. <laughs> People um, start pulling cards out of you. That's a fun moment. Oh, oh god, stop it, please. It's... I mean, why else do you include the deck of many things? It's temptation. Like, it played the exact role I wanted it to play, and I am 
intrigued to see if it plays any further roles. I gave you guys beans. You have resisted the temptation of for using further of those so far, so in the scene of chaos. <laughs> beans? <laughs> Let's right. see We've how far. So let's see how we, far the temptation can go. <laughs> we democratically <laughs> divvied up the beans after a test bean. Yeah. Also, yeah, like, we do, do we all have one bean? Yeah. Yeah, I one I feel bean. technically have them all, I believe, and it's just like we like know that each one is divided up. But uh, okay. Yeah, I feel yeah, like I, the bean beans are inventory. like a traveling item, you know, like like an on the road item. Yeah, I'm gonna plant be, one before we leave. I'm pretty sure, like that's my right thought. Yeah. Well, what if it's like a fireball and it just blows well, up oh, New Fugle? Not in town, similar you know, we to are like... in a garden. No, oh, this is. I actually like. I think I hate these beans just because of like the context of how they arrived. Because it was literally like after um, everyone got on my dick about that fucking have uh, Jesse punch me moment, and then everyone's like, "What do we plant these fucking beans?" And it's like. Yeah, you do want to plant those goddamn beans, don't you? And if you were like impervious to most damage, you'd want to be punched to test it out. So <laughs> I hate them. Stupid beans. Again, that Stupid. moment too, like we were six hours in Stupid. on an like, incredibly long session, so we were getting loopy. Indeed. Yeah. No, Crazy, I don't put them in your kidney. <laughs> what if I put them in a stew, Denny? Oh, actually, let me have, 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 have a thought. What if um, someone ate the entire deck of many things? We just well, talked about that. We spoke about the this. deck or the beans. Maybe? Yeah, we did. Do you mean the beans? <laughs> the deck of many beans. <gasps> no, what about the bean items. of did many decks? Happen. Did we actually? Did we talk about what happened? Wow. Cool. Yeah. I was really doing something else. Well, <laughs> did you become the deck, and then people start pulling cards? That's when. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I was wondering if every effect would really happen at once because that would be really funny, but um, it doesn't matter. Yeah. To reiterate, I included the deck because. <laughs> That's what I, I thought you'd that. say. I just was. On the off chance that you gave us something uh, concrete to think about, I just asked the question. Hey, if I... you do end up using the deck, I <laughs> by, have the deck of many things. By presenting oh. the deck, I have already given you things to think about, it's as true, was yeah. showcased in this episode. It's Chekhov's Ryan, gun now, man. Ryan, pull well, one right now. Okay. Uh, so, speed. first of all, I got the animated deck of many things from Ooh. Deck of Many. So the deck is really nice. nice. So that's the that's the, the face. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we get. All right, so let's oh, see what would happen. Shit. Yeah. It's, oh, he dropped them on the floor. This is a good start. <laughs> da Dallas, how would you feel if the you cards are excited? <laughs> if you pull wish, I will not be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's wish again? Yeah. <laughs> I truly, I don't even really know what all the deck does. Okay, let's see what we get. But I've like seen it destroy it. campaigns. The yeah. fates. Campaign. Also, here is the Your card. <laughs> fates. Ooh, shit. What do you? That's a cool one. Oh yeah. Ooh. Ah, uh, what would this card, for example, do? I will look yeah. it up for you. I can I tell you right now. Yeah, has it. As reality's fabric unravels and spins anew, allowing you to avoid or erase one event as if it never happened. <gasps> oh no! Could you imagine <laughs> if you'd have drawn that freaking card? Can I keep my draw for later, Denny? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Holy uh, shit. All right, well. But it's ah! really <laughs> For example, and now we have upped the deck of many things stakes. No. Perhaps you should plant those beans before things go crazy. In a row. Yeah. We plant the, the beans, the bean summons the deck of many things. <laughs> <laughs> Double temptation. I that can't erase it's just begging to be pulled. The event. For real. <laughs> What the that fuck? was a good tarot well, read. Like yes, the, what the, the fuck? talk on throwing the tarot. Wow. That was kismet. Mm -hmm. Dude, that was insane. <laughs> if only. Well, no. guess we'll never know. Do you have a I'm question pulling that for... damn card, boy. <laughs> um, Do you have a so... question for Elowin about the next thing that happens? About her, like, going around and asking people for mm -hmm. assistance here? It's a little bit later. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm actually going to hop in here because I've got a question for Christy. So it's no secret at this point that time magic hangs over Nell like a wet blanket. And the moment in combat where Nell got affected by magic that slowed her down, you took that opportunity to really showcase her feelings. Um, 
in that moment after it kind of subsided when Gideon was comforting you, um, you did some extra rolls to, when you were trying to calm down, and to which you got a nat one and vomited. Um, <laughs> would you care to expand on what was going on there? Yeah, well, it was funny because slow happened earlier and I was like, whoa, shit, like, what if that happened to Nell? Like, that wouldn't have been good. And then it did happen to me and I was thrilled. Um, oh, thanks, goodbye. That's really sweet. <laughs> Yeah, it was one of those moments I was telling Dallas after, like, I was only rolling her dice um, and they just had a story to tell because I kept being like, when it first got cast, I rolled to see like kind of like an intelligence or like a wisdom saving throw type thing, like after the one I already did to like have it cast on me to see where I was at. And it was it was like below a 10. And I was like, OK, so then I'm like, I'm not doing well, um, experiencing like this thing uh, that I've like, you know, done to my family and then I just kept kind of checking to see if I had gotten it together and I hadn't so I just really wanted to play that up a little bit as well All right. so yeah well uh, I mean clearly the trauma comes from you know this situation with your family you, you know you've kind of frozen them in time do you think Nell has a permanent aversion to time magic or do you think she might recover from that negative perception once she's able to fix that situation, hopefully. Um, I think you know if, if I'm if it fixes, if <laughs> if the scroll thing fixes everything, then we're good to go. Um, but if it doesn't, it'll be a bit more of like a something to grapple with. I think. Um, so it's kind of like one of those hard things too, because I'm like in the grand scheme compared to everyone else, like this is kind of pretty minor. Um. But it's still like important to her at the very least. And that's why I kind of try to flavor of like, I imagine, you know, me and Runa were so close that we like had that kind of thing of like, oh, if someone gets hurt, like you feel it. And so it felt like in that moment, I'm like, oh shit, I'm feeling it. Like I'm seeing through Runa's eyes right now. And I didn't really like that concept. So, well, I so mean, and yeah, if I, if I could fix it, it would, I would probably be fine. I would get, I would get used to it again at some point, but I would always be maybe a little cautious at first. Yeah. Fair enough. That's all I got there. Yippee Kaye. Um cool beans. Um so yeah, so then all of that lovely stuff happens. Um we kill everything and um so begins the conversation about the deck of many things. I uh, was, you were doing really well when this happened. Um, do you want to talk about, you know, Elowen's thoughts and feelings, figuring out what to do in this situation? I just want it so bad. Mm -hmm. What that stupid deck? Um, I don't know. I, I really didn't think Denny was actually going to present this as an option. I thought that was a joke when you said it. So I was like, man, whatever. I don't have to think about this. Um, and then as, especially because you were like wizards from the tower that I've heard strong wizards are at. I was like, I get where we're going with this. I understand what questions I need to ask. And you're like, nope, here's the other guy. Have a genie, why don't you? Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, truly me asking the group is Dallas asking the group as well. Just like, what actually do I do about this? But I think, I think I knew it's not. There are other options. <laughs> there are other options but it's good to know that deck is out there that was heartbreaking to watch you try to make a decision on that <laughs> mm -hmm. oh it sucks oh it's really not fun mm. I was truly so angry I, tr I truly I left that session was like I need uh, to go as, sit and think for a while <laughs> as per the quote we heard uh, about the situation afterward from good friend of the channel Nikki Degui, uh I asked Dallas how the session went she said oh it's fine to which she said oh well I was talking to your fiance who said you left the room wouldn't talk to him and stared angrily at a scone <laughs> well the thing is he actually showed up a little while later I ran around the house fuming for a while before <laughs> yelling at myself for a while before he showed up by the time he had arrived I'd, I'd gotten to the staring angrily at scone part but there had been a rage before that as well uh, yes the seven steps of grief <laughs> staring angrily at a scone is number three uh, I, I definitely felt like your frustration was indirectly at plants 
And I'm like, Denny just told me to say it, okay? <laughs> I'm just a tool. <laughs> just, so I'm so I understand. Sorry, I know where the blame lies. Don't you worry. <laughs> Please don't be mad. And yeah, then I called Nick. you. And then I called you kid, and I knew that was going to be hilarious. <laughs> oh <my laughs> I'm like, God. I have to call her a child. Stop that. <laughs> Such a shit disturber. I love it. Um. Yeah, and then that led to the whole thing with like plants um teleporting uh potentially being able to teleport us somewhere and i was already kind of like lost in the sauce at this point in terms of like the i was like you know sad as now or whatever but i was like what are what we're not gonna teleport to the tower because i thought that's what the main conversation was i was like that makes no sense that's so far away from what we're trying to do like why just like practically like why the fuck you know so i was so confused but what was everyone else's like feelings and thoughts in that moment because or like where would you have wanted to teleport with that open invitation because I didn't know what to do with that I mean I um, think you made the right choice to like move the story forward in the way that we're going hmm. interesting yeah I, like, I think I like we could have de- we could have used it to go to the tower and pull cards from a deck you know we could have done that but that does take us wildly off course from where we're what we're doing mm-hmm. um, we could i also could have sent you where you're going we could have gone yes. well we could have gone to varm hall we could have gone straight to Derekarth. i mean we that's uh, where i, I mean, was I guess, go, like my thought was yeah. like we just go up the rinzar peaks we go right to Drax's mm-hmm. family it's, yeah um, we leave all of our horses skip to the die. climb yeah skip denny mentioned climb. that he's like they're gonna be so sad when they leave their horses <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, never. Y'all saps can't leave your damn horses behind. Excuse me. Well, it me, did Denny. seem like just from like an emotional perspective, I couldn't figure out how we could possibly go straight to Varmhall from this. Like I mm-hmm. there's it, it's like you're like let's transport to like my sister's living room. Like there's I need to work my way up to that. We're not we're not going yeah. straight there right now. I can you have to give me some you know, I, I totally got it. We were not I mean, going to go straight to Varmhall. It was a great that role play opportunity. You you guys had the option and you took this. <laughs> I said, I you like really no. Really it safe. Don't call it this. You took <laughs> this. <laughs> to be beautiful fair, garden. the concept of going to the Rinsar Peaks did not occur to me because I was getting just a little emotionally distraught, but that would have been really smart because we will have to leave our horses somewhere because they are not coming up with that up that mountain with us. Um, Denny, you know what we took? But... We took another wonderful conversation with Q. That's what we took. They, they took another <laughs> chance at a farmer's market is what they did. We took <laughs> another chance at a farmer's tomorrow. market. And you we know, I really, I really want to go to that prank store. So. Yes, <laughs> pester digitation. So important. You did, Denny. And we took avoiding bubbly pee. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also, I forgot briefly how teleportation circles worked, and I was like, oh, we can see like where they were going. But I was like, no, the one that's here would be like the one people use to get here, right? I was like, fuck, I really was hoping we could figure out a way to figure out where the fuck they teleported to. I realized I was muted during that whole thing. Yeah, they're like nodes that you can teleport to if you have the knowledge. Yes. Which I did know. I do play a wizard. I know things sometimes, but for whatever <laughs> reason, my brain like short circuited. I was like, ah, we know where they are. Did anyone copy down yep. that circle? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Oh, yes, you did. I remember you doing that. Yeah. Yep. Great. The circle in that room? Yep. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah, because I, I didn't know what it was at first. Uh, and so I grabbed it and then like didn't fully complete it because I was worried it was some sort of weird thing. And then I was like, oh, it's a teleportation circle. I'm like, I can draw forget it. about it. Burn. Yeah. yeah, we do have that available to us um, for the future. Mm-hmm. But, um, Danny, you already told me this, but do you want to tell everyone um, what it was you're planning on enforcing with that teleportation um, circle decision? Yeah, I thought I thought what I was going to do in that situation was I was actually going to have each of you message me privately where you wanted to go. And then the majority oh. vote, you would have gone there. But, again, trusting Nick in his DM oh. prowess, he put the trust on whoever touched the crystal ball first, so I was like, we'll go with that. Huh. I also well, forgot. We're all such a polite party, so I feel like we wouldn't have, like, stepped on each other's toes. I, like I would have known. I, I did plan to ask, like, you tell me, but then I was going to ask, what do you actually want to go? And I would have sent to you there. 
So there, there would have been an opportunity to like screw up and you could have blamed it on me or something, right? Mm. <laughs> Cause like, we only oh, heard Oh, I knew from... I could trust you. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> we only heard from Anthony and Logan both saying like, the Rins are peaks, but Ryan and Adam and Dallas, like where would you guys have picked in the moment? Uh, horses. I would have just teleported outside the, the lair. I'm gonna go to that tower. Mm -hmm. Second time that Abe's been like, we're on a time crunch. We can save a huge amount of time by teleporting. <laughs> I, we'll see the horses again. <laughs> like, They're going to starve to death. No, no we, would, we have the ability to send we messages. Yeah, we would have, we would have told. It would, worst it would comes to worst, they would have got repoed. Yeah. yeah, they would have just mm -hmm. been in someone else's care for a while. A little yield well, tow truck coming along, pulling some horses. The Ascendancy <laughs> horses would go back to the Ascendancy. Yeah, Ascendancy and then, horse too. And then Hildy I mean, would have our Appa arc where you had to reclaim your horse. No. <laughs> no. no, it would have... Yeah. Not in such cool conditions. It would have been such like a... If okay. we had gone right to, to uh, Daryl Carth, it would have been fine. We would have messaged Q and explained okay. and yeah. be like, Q can like pay from our Arc arcnet like funds or whatever and then like we just like we're good for it or whatever you know yeah. take it out of our hero money <laughs> and we would have skipped over varm hall this is probably yes. going to derek I, I have a question like for denny plan denny did you lock the doors on purpose so they had to teleport somewhere <laughs> of course <laughs> My man. we teleported just outside the doors <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. If you ever need a code DM, Denny, I'm in, baby. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. I could be a guest on our own show. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. It'd be, so be so funny. It's like I haven't played all kinds of characters in this setting yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I'm going to hop in with a question once again for, and this will be a fun throwback. So back in episode 28, Wax on the Cake, um, Christy, you got Drac to send a sending spell to your twin sister Runa after you found out that they weren't actually frozen in time, just slowed. Um, mm -hmm. And the following morning, uh, actually, I should firstly, I did finally go back and find that message, which Drac, your message from that morning was, hello, this is Nell's friend. I'm checking in on you on her behalf. What do you feel? Are you OK? She misses you dearly. Happy birthday. Oh god, that's fucking heartbreaking. Um, <laughs> I did not. I didn't keep, take any notes because I was too emotional. So. And uh, that following morning, after you did that sending, uh, Nell had a vision of the moment Drac received Runa's response. And now, in this session, five in-game days later, Drac received and relayed that response. Um, so, Christy, you had quite an emotional reaction as I told Anthony the message. Uh, were you expecting that it would be so heavy on you as a player? think so <laughs> i think part of it was that like i know that we're getting close to varm hall so as you know i've been like trying to work on stuff um like you know some context for that and like runa has been such like a character in the background that is so significant to Nell, but like hasn't like we haven't actually seen or interacted with her so the fact that there was like the first time like in game like we were hearing her i think just like hit me way harder than I was expecting it to. On top of like literally everything else that had just fucking happened in that episode. So um no, I wasn't planning on crying, actually. <laughs> that brought hmm. me to tears too, so okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I actually watched loved rewatching that moment because there were so many reactions, like the Anthony teared up, Christy was just breaking down, everyone else was like, oh! <laughs> it was yeah. so cool. Um, something about receiving a, a message from someone that you sent to so long ago, like really it's not that long ago, five days, but like, just like the reuniting of family to me is just a, a really powerful emotion, so. Yeah. It was really, hard because like obviously it was one of those things where like meta wise I had already put it together what was happening was like reacting to that as me and then I was like oh now I have to like actually like react in character be like what like you know, I'm like sobbing I'm like what do you mean <laughs> it was know. funny I was thinking I'm like wow now it's taking this a lot better than Christy is because <laughs> <laughs> I was like I just couldn't like my brain was splitting in half I couldn't like figure out 
<laughs> yeah, that's understandable. Um, to Ooh. both Anthony and Christy, um, what did you guys think happened to the original casting of Sending? Did you just give up on hearing a response, or...? I just thought, like, because when I sent it, it was... Because you can tell when it's received, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think you said that I could tell it was received, but I didn't get a message back. Well, I think the way I described it was it was like putting a bottle out to sea. Like, you know it'll go somewhere. Right. You don't know if it'll... When. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Drac would have pursued it unless um, Nell asked him to again. Because that's a very sensitive topic, so... What? <laughs> <laughs> Content. Um... No, I definitely was wondering, like, the closer we were getting to Varm Hall, I'm like, is he gonna, like, is it gonna happen before mm -hmm. Varm Hall? Like, I was so, like, it was kind of hanging over me. I'm like, it has to happen at some point, but, like, I just didn't know when. Um, so, yeah. I, mean, I hadn't given up. Like, I knew, I knew it was gonna happen because I had the vision it was, but I guess I was mainly surprised that it was, um, like, something we could understand. So I was thinking, like, oh, it's going to be fucking, like, weird or, like, slowed or, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of kind of tying this into, like, the previous topic of the teleportation. Um, ultimately, I figured, kind of like Adam was saying about Abe's thoughts, you guys would have, you know, taken advantage of the teleportation to maybe tra fast track a little bit. Or I was suspecting Varmhall Village because a lot of you knew Nell wanted to stop there on the way. Um and I thought that this sending moment might have helped spur that decision, at least in Nell's eyes. However, it seemed to have the opposite effect. So what's going through Nell's mind that kind of prevented her from taking advantage of the situation? I simply cannot. <laughs> the, ooh, just the one, I, I don't know, Nell was in a fucked place because I was exhausted and all that shit had happened. Like, I just couldn't, like, roll up in that current state, like feel like it's gonna be like we're gonna camp like right outside and then walk in first thing in the morning so i'm gonna be like so on top of my game as much as possible to enter because um this will come up hopefully at some point but like now left the village under the cover of night like just left them completely on their own devices and didn't fucking tell like anyone except for like her one aunt who had to then deal with everything so she feels like a goddamn coward for fleeing in that way and it's like I just can't get over the comp like I keep thinking about like I have to walk through the village now like all the way through to get to where they are and everyone's gonna be looking at me and I'm like nope <laughs> so I need that time of walking there to get to the point where I could actually do that so well it also sounds like there's a lot of conversations characters want to have with each other on the way there so maybe this <laughs> is for the better uh gonna, yeah we have things to talk about <laughs> Question Stuff to and things. Nick, how did how did it feel to be present as a uh, witness to all this trauma of under four hundred year olds majority? Dude, let me talk. Let, let, I say this with the utmost respect. Fucking kids, man. <laughs> so dramatic. Um, I mean, I was like Nick himself was almost in tears during a lot of it, um, but. Uh, Phil uh, is, it was was fairly unbothered by most of it. <laughs> he, he's in a ball. Like his problems are bigger than anyone else's problems. <laughs> um, but it was really cool. You guys are an amazing group of players. It's it's amazing, and uh, Danny's lucky to have you guys. You're damn right. Truly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. Um, great. So we. Um, and we covered it. We went out to the gardens, and that was where that ended. Um, and yeah, I'm so looking forward to the next episode. <laughs> uh, but Denny, you had a fun question, so let's do that and then wrap it up. Yeah, not really a fun question, more like oh, fun information. Um, so I believe I've told you guys in the past, like I was working on like connecting you guys as duos, being like. Like, <laughs> Elowen and Abe, for example, are our sideline contest duo. <laughs> Woo! I've finally come up with a little fun title for each of your pairings. <laughs> okay. Oh boy, please do. All right. So, Abe and Nell is, of course, Phoenix and the Beast Slayer. Um, okay. Abe and Drac, 
Uh, I couldn't quite find the right words for this, but it's like, you know, in like uh, a romantic, like spy comedy film when like the two antagonistic, like husband and wife couple are like fighting and they meet each other face to face and have a quick quip. Yeah, that's the two of you. Mr. Smith. Yeah, you guys are Mr. (laughs) and Mrs. Smith. (laughs) Because Uh, I stole his kill. (laughs) Did you, did Drac call Abe, um brother like in the yeah. draconic word for brother yeah okay. yeah, yeah battle brothers yeah that won't be a tiny moment <laughs> when a brings that up i'll tell you that right now <laughs> Would Abe have known? Do, you, do you know draconic though no but he heard him he heard drag say it to his his mm-hmm. blood brother oh yeah, true 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 like, um dusty. Uh, I've I got all the Abe one done first in case you can't follow why I'm doing Abe's first. Uh, Abe and Azaria are old souls. Mm. Um, Abe and Gideon are Poncho pals. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we've got Nell, Nell and Drac, uh, little birds leaving the nest. Oh, that's so cute. cute. Nell and Gideon are trauma twins. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nice. So good. That for us, I can see artwork of it already. Uh, <laughs> Nell and Azaria, employment. <laughs> <laughs> Not like research something. <laughs> nope. Employment. <laughs> employment. Thought you were to me. <laughs> uh, Nell and Elowin, give me a book and I'll be okay. <laughs> oh, that's so fair. Funny. Join me in the back of the caravan. <laughs> um, I realize Nell should theoretically be a part of this, but I'm giving it to Drac and Gideon. Uh, healing hands. Yeah, <laughs> um, Drac and Azaria. Potato, potato, vishti, vishtak. Drac and Elowin. Siblings, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, Azaria and Elowin are academic associates. Um, Azaria and Gideon are marked souls. And oh. lastly, Elowin and Gideon are contingency plan. <gasps> oh, oh, I like shit. that. That's <laughs> fucking that cool. <laughs> oh, that actually reminds me of like when you like asked Gideon first about the card thing, and I was like, no, what the answer is. <laughs> Like, of course you would, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're right. I actually didn't need to ask Gideon at all. <laughs> it's very Do great, it, Nick. Yes. God damn it, Nick. Oh, my God. Sweet. Cool. Those are and great, did, Danny. Thank I you for sharing. Love that. Can yeah. we post yeah. that in the Discord or something? So uh, that we sure. can, like, it'll all be a, see it. It'll be a poorly written note. No, oh, I can Excellent. just type it up. Do whatever you want. Contingency plan is the coolest fucking duo name I've heard. It's a pretty fucking yeah, good name. I like that. We'll go back to Brawl Bar and you guys can fight each other underneath that uh, moniker. <laughs> so, uh, Before you wrap Who up. Who wins that fight? Thank you, Nick, for joining us on the after party and on the main show. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah. Say no, that. Nick. It was pretty sweet. It was so <laughs> queet. Queet as hell. <laughs> Dude. Didn't we determine that we means are. like ankle or something? Yeah, I think yeah, so. It yeah. does. It's like a Scottish slang for ankle. Ooh, a cleat. <laughs> No, we're not doing. We are not doing this again. I'm wrapping up. So, shush. Um, cool. Thank you, everyone, so much for hanging out with us um, for this beast of an after party while we discussed three episodes. Um, whoo! Uh, going forward, if you have any questions uh, about Play Dicey that you would like us to answer, you can send them to me on Twitter at cbkclo or email them to me at cbkclo at gmail dot com. Um, we have episodes coming up. You'll figure it out because I can't remember. <laughs> October 16th is the next one. Regular time? Regular time. At 6 p.m. Eastern here on Twitch. Um, that's all for us. And we invite you to join us next time on Play Dice the After Party. Good queet to you. Bubbly pee looking queet. <laughs> Just a heads up uh, that if you're hearing any music right now, you're watching it on YouTube. And that music is coming from Tim from Tabletop Audio. So shout out to Tim for the tunes. 